Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and I've been working on my upcoming Steam game called Dinky Guardians. Here's the story of the first devlog on how I went from this, to this, to this in just a few weeks. So how do I design my games, how I validate ideas and build prototypes, which actually the way that I built the prototype for this game is very different from the advice you normally hear, I'll tell you why that is in a bit, and in the end I will also tell you what happened to this project since the official announcement video. Right now, in the present, the game already has quite a lot of working systems. There are several automation elements with various machines working with one another. The player can take all kinds of actions. Of course, all of the code is very clean, with lots of interfaces, which really helps speed up development. There are buildings that can be constructed, the dinkies can be fed, the zombies can be defended against. So right now, with a few weeks of development, the game is already quite nice. When I officially announced the game, it looked like this. But just a while before that, when I first made the Steam page, it looked just like this, with no logic and just visuals. And even before before that, when I made the quick prototype to test the idea, it looked like this, with working logic and no visuals, and all the way back to the very beginning, where it looked literally just like this. The whole process between this, this, and this was a few weeks, or maybe a bit more, since making this game isn't my only occupation. But still, going back to the very beginning, the first thing you need to do when making any game is obviously coming up with the idea. I talked about how this idea got started in the announcement video, but here's the quick summary. Basically, it's been way too long since my last Steam game. This one is going to be my ninth Steam game, and the last one came out in 2019, that was quite a while ago, so I really want to get back to it and put out a proper complete game this year, but at the same time I'm always super busy keeping up with this channel, answering comments, questions on my course and so on, so I wanted a game idea that I could produce in a relatively short amount of time so that I could keep doing everything else and still launch a game this year. And back then when I was thinking about this I was just finishing my free multiplayer course and I really enjoyed working with Unity's multiplayer toolset, so I thought to myself that I'd love to make a proper multiplayer game, it's been ages since I did anything in multiplayer. I I remember adding a multiplayer mode to my very first Steam game, Survivor Squad, and how difficult that was back then. Compared to that, right now, thanks to awesome tools like Netcode for Game Objects, it is so much simpler. So that's how I decided on the core idea. The file name for the design document was Steam Game Multiplayer June.txt. I was going to make a fun co op game, but at the same time, that's not enough of a game idea. That's way too generic. Just by itself, that doesn't really have any hook. I've talked about marketing before on this channel and how it generally is the most important thing nowadays. I really can't stress that enough. Nowadays, if your goal is to find success with your games, then you need to think very carefully about marketing. And when it comes to marketing, the better your game idea, the easier it is. A good idea is usually something that, first of all, matches your target audience, which in my case is the Steam audience, and then it also needs to have some familiar parts and just enough of a unique twist. In this example, I know the Steam audience loves automation, factory, crafting, and colony building games, things like Factorio, RimWorld, or Slime Rancher, so I thought, okay, why don't I combine some fun co-op gameplay like Overcooked with some interesting base building and automation elements like Factorio. And yep, that was the idea that I decided upon. However, that's really just a start. Coming up with a good idea is great, but you really need to actually validate your ideas. Maybe they work in your mind, but then they no longer work. So as soon as I had a rough idea down on paper, I just fleshed it out quite a bit more. For me, in my design process, I like to write lots of questions and try to answer them. Things like, is the world going to be flat, or is it going to have some hills? Can the player jump? What is going to be the antagonist to the player? Is it just some zombie attacks? How do you actually gather more dinkies? Do they just spawn or do you find them out in the wild? Also, what is the end game? What is the win or lose condition? I still don't have clear answers to some of these questions nowadays, but I find it very important to ask as many questions as possible right on the start. I find that asking questions and coming up with answers really helps the design process. Then I started writing down what the gameplay would be like step by step. I tried to envision what would the player do, what was compelling about the game, could I build it, and what were the main challenges. Again, all of this still just in my imagination. I still hadn't written a single line of code at this point. This is all part of the process of validating the core idea as quickly as possible. I don't start actually building something until I'm confident in the idea. So after asking all these questions, then I finally did start writing some code. And actually, funnily enough, I wrote most of the original prototype in a pretty bad way, and I mean that physically. I was on my flight going over to San Francisco for GDC. I had all my design with all my questions and gameplay written down, and the goal was to turn it into a proper prototype during that flight, although I was kind of unlucky in that the person in front of me on the flight decided to spend the whole time with the seat all the way back, which left me with just about 10 centimeters to work with. So I was writing code and trying to navigate Unity with my laptop only half open in the most uncomfortable way possible. I definitely would not recommend working like this. 
But still, I did manage to build pretty much the entire core prototype in about 4 hours during that flight. My focus was on really just getting the core working, meaning just some basic player controls, handle interactions, place down some resource nodes and gather resources from them. I wanted to place down some machines that can automate the resource gathering, and then the player can pick up the food gathered by the machine, also implement the dinkies, some basic hunger mechanic, dropping the XP pellets. All of those, that's really the core concept of the game. Interacting with objects, building automation, gathering food and feeding dinkies, everything else flows from that. And here's an interesting teaching moment. Now, the most important part for me in making this prototype is actually something that most people don't do. Usually, most people tell you to build a prototype quickly and don't worry about the quality of the code, go ahead and write some dirty code, just get it working. Now, if my goal is really just a throwaway prototype on a very simple game, then I can agree with that approach, so something like a game jam. However, in this case, my goal was to make a proper game, and my goal was not only to validate the game idea, but also validate the code architecture. Meaning, my goal was also to make sure that I could expand upon the core interactions to eventually support all of the unique interactions that I wanted the game to have. So that meant actually writing some proper clean code, setting up the proper abstractions, multiple interfaces, and making sure everything worked and was easily expandable to fit all of the ideas for the game. One thing that actually helped me quite a lot in making this part easier was the fact that just before I made this, I made my free complete course, which actually shares some mechanics with this game. In there, I already had a player which could interact and carry objects. So here in my prototype, I used mostly the same architecture. I have an eye interactable interface that I can implement in anything that I want to interact with, like for example, the resource node for gathering resources, as well as the dinky for feeding it. Then I have the carry object for all of the objects that can be picked up, also using a scriptable object to define the various types. So a lot of that was pretty much exactly just like I did in my free complete course. And then of course I expanded upon it, so I also made a carry object parent, because again, while making this prototype, I was already thinking ahead, and I knew that I would need not just a player, but also other objects to pick up and carry objects. I knew I would have automated machines that need to carry things, so I did that by defining an carry object parent interface, and anything that implements that carry object parent interface can carry any object. Which is that this core prototype is already actually quite solid. I can walk around as my player, I can approach a resource node and manually gather some food, or I can build a machine in order to do it for me, then I can interact with some food to pick it up, I can approach the dinkies and feed them to reduce their hunger, in turn they drop exp pellets which I can then pick up. So a lot of it already working and this was all built pretty quickly. Most of it was really on that flight in just about 4 hours, and then a few hours here and there while I was working at GDC and on the flight back. So here's another teaching moment. This is a great example of something that I always talk about because it generally is so important, which is the power of experience. If you're a beginner, it might sound insane how I managed to build all of these systems and interactions so quickly, but keep in mind, I've been writing code for 25 years and making games for over 10. If I had done this many years ago, it would have been quite difficult and taken much much longer. But nowadays, by now, I've already built systems just like this dozens of times before, so that's how I can build all of this so quickly. My advice to you is build lots of things. The more games you make, the more experience you get, the easier everything becomes. Okay, so back to the story of the development on this game. By this point, I had the core prototype working, and like I mentioned in the announcement video, the goal with this game is to make it and launch it quickly. In order to find success on Steam, you need to participate in a Steam festival, and in order to sign up for the festival in June, I needed to actually register the game back in March. And then, in order to register the game, I needed to have a public coming soon page, and in order to do that, I need to write a description, and importantly, set up some screenshots. This was actually pretty tricky, and actually, let me correct myself here, this part actually actually happened before the prototype. I made the Steam page and set it up as coming soon in early March before I left for GDC. So at this point I actually didn't even have a working prototype, so how on earth do I announce a game when almost nothing exists? The answer is quickly think up what is the visual style of the game and set up some dioramas to simulate what the final game will be like. So that's exactly what I did. Again, I'm not an artist, so I browsed the asset store for something that would fit my vision. I knew I wanted something casual, happy and jolly. I also knew that I wanted a bunch of character customization. Thankfully I found the perfect pack, some nice cute characters with tons of props to allow for tons of customization. Then for the dinkies and zombies, that was quite a bit tricky. I browsed tons of monster packs to find something that would fit the cute style of the game that I was looking for. After lots of searching, I found these two packs. Technically, the dinky is actually a rabbit, which I just recolored, but I think it actually does look good. So I picked up an environment pack and dumped them all in a new Unity project. Then I just set up a quick diorama to take some screenshots. For that, I needed to position the characters in various ways. However, as you might know, Unity does not have a built-in method for making humanoid animations. Thankfully, I already had the asset U-Motion that I picked up ages ago, so I just used that to make some fixed animations to get the shots that I wanted. With that, I had my screenshots and I was ready for Steam. Oh, and also one more fun thing. For coming up with the name of the game, Dinky Guardians, 
I actually didn't come up with that right away. I knew that I wanted the creatures to have a cute sounding name, but I didn't know exactly what. Initially, I was going to call them mini me's, but that's a bit too wordy. So I actually used ChatGPT and asked it to come up with some cute sounding creature names. The results were pretty great, lots of options, and after looking at them, I immediately picked the name Dinky and that was that. So that's how I'm using AI in my game dev process. I don't use it to write any code, but I do use it for brainstorming ideas and names. Then I wrote the short and long description, and with that I had a complete scene page. I managed to do it just about one or two days before the registration deadline, that was very stressful, but I did end up making it. Although, here's another marketing teaching moment. I would not recommend you announce your game without a trailer. You really should have a trailer by the time you publicly announce your game. It really does matter a ton in helping you gather wishlists. I think games with trailers gather wishlists on a rate of about three times more, so it really is a massive thing. And that is exactly why you might notice that I'm saying that I made the Steam page public in early March. But I only made the official announcement video in mid-April. That gap is basically the time that it took to make the trailer. Which, in order to make the trailer, I basically had two options. One, I could make it all animated, so I could animate all the systems that I had in mind for the final game, or I could just actually build those systems and then just record some gameplay. Since I'm not an animator or a very efficient video producer, I chose the second option instead. I just built upon the prototype and added tons more systems. I expanded upon the various interfaces and made many more mechanics, more objects, more interactions. Thankfully, because I focused on making a good code architecture in the prototype, this was actually surprisingly easy, and the game already has quite a bit of emergent gameplay. All the objects can very easily work with one another. I already had the mining machines, which automatically interact with the resource nodes. Then I made a transport of the machine, which automatically grabs any loose carry objects. It picks up anything in range and drops it in a container building. Then I made a simple vehicle, which takes container objects and carries them to another container building. Basically these vehicles, this is what I'm using instead of single place conveyor belts. And of course, this is all using those interfaces so the player can also do all of this. The player can gather resources, the player can pick up carry objects, can pick up containers and all of that. In the trailer you can actually see the player AIs also interacting with all of these objects. I'm thinking I might do some more deep dive devlog videos on how exactly all of these systems are set up. The toughest part of building this was honestly just the visuals. I always hate working with art because it's not my skill set, although using asset packs really does help. But still, I had to experiment quite a lot with a bunch of shaders to get the look that I wanted. Eventually, I settled on the equivalent shader, which does look excellent. I'm really happy with how it looks in the end. Then for the buildings, I'm using the Sci-Fi Cinti Worlds pack. So all in all, the visuals took a ton of work because again, this is not my skill set, but I'm happy with how it looks. With all those mechanics and systems working, I just recorded the game trailer. I talked about that in more detail in the previous video, alongside a nice trailer trick. So I made the trailer and officially announced the game. The announcement video also includes my sales goals for this project, so definitely go watch that one if you haven't seen it. And now the question that you might be wondering is what has happened with the project since the announcement of the video which was over a month ago? The answer is sadly not really too much. My goal with this project is to be as transparent as possible, so I'm going to be honest with you. In terms of schedule, my goal was to work on the game for one week and make regular videos the other week. However, for these past roughly two months, I was really busy with several complex projects that I really had to do. First, it was the update to my Ultimate Unity Overview course. It had been quite some time since the last update, so I really wanted to do that. Then the Cinti store had a huge sale, and I really wanted to experiment with making some interesting videos using Cinti packs. I made a fun drag racing minigame, and then a nice weapon attachment system. Those had to be done while the sale was live, so I had to do them in that time. And another big project was how I committed to doing another free expansion to my turn-based strategy course, adding multi-floor support. I had already talked about that several months ago, and I really had to get that done. I did not want to push that behind by about two months. So because I had to do all of those complex projects, I barely managed to make any progress on the game since then. I just had a few hours here and there, mostly just refactoring some code. My hope with saying this is that by being honest, you can see that it's perfectly normal for plans to not happen exactly as you might want them to. Even though I have quite a lot of experience, I've made plenty of games, this still happens to me. Things come up and planning goes awry. My advice in this case is make the best of it, and if something goes wrong, don't dwell on it and just move ahead. That's exactly what I'm doing. I definitely wish I was a bit more ahead the development, so that sucks. But complaining about it isn't really going to help me. And by now, I have finally completed all of those spending projects, so I can now focus a lot more on the game. The question remains, do I have enough time? The festival is on the 19th of June, so actually less than a month. And that deadline means that by then, I need to have a working build. So the question is, can I build everything that still needs doing in such a short amount of time? 
Honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I'm pretty productive when I really get down to it, but I don't know for certain that even if I'm working at 200% that I can make this deadline, but still, I can say that I will try my best. So with that said, I better finish writing this devlog and really get back to work. So once again, check the link in the description and add Dinky Gardens to your wishlist. It's a small thing, but it really does help. Stay tuned for future devlogs. Let me know what type of devlogs you'd like to see. Do you prefer just general weekly summaries or deep dives into various systems? Let me know in the comments. Alright, so thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you next time.